What's going on everybody? Welcome back to my channel once again. So in a previous video, I engraved some brass coins just like this one. This was the Terminator T800 coin that I did. And I will put a link right up there in the description on where you can check this video out in case you missed it. But today we're gonna to be going over engraving some steel coins just like this one. This is just a steel blank that I have, which as you can see, a magnet sticks right to it. But I'll go over all the settings to get results just like this. This one, you can see the Star Wars Master Yoda coin that I did. And this one is the Simpsons. And I modeled both of these up and I think they came out awesome. So let's jump right over to the computer. I'll show how I get this all set up and the settings that I used and go from there. All right, so here we are over in Lightburn. And as you can see down here, I am going to be using my 70 millimeter lens compared to my 200 that I used on the last video doing the Terminator coin. So first things first, you will need a grayscale height map and you can head over into 3dgrayscale.com and find one that you like. I do upload mine. Here you can see the Simpsons one that I did. I'll be using the Yoda one, which I haven't uploaded yet, but I will by the time you're watching this video. Here is the Terminator coin that I used in the previous one. So if you'd like to download that, just head over to the site and feel free to download it. So for this, I will be using my Star Wars Yoda coin that I designed. And I don't need to re-download that because I already have it saved on my computer. But before I get that brought in, I will just first create a simple circle to do the outline of the coin. So I can go up, click on the little circle, and draw that out to about there. And I know that I will need this to be 37.5 millimeters is the dimensions I need. And now we have a circle. I'm just gonna go ahead and get that centered. I can click on it and just click P on your keyboard and that will center it. So with that centered, I will just click on the T1 to make this a tool path. And then I will go ahead, click on it again, I'll right click it and duplicate this and set this to a separate layer. And I'll just put this at zero one for the time being. So now what I wanna go ahead and do is I'm just gonna set this to a line and I will just move this tool path down to the bottom just so it's kind of out of the way. And I'm just gonna disable these so I don't even see it at all because I won't be needing it until later. So now I can go ahead and bring in the Yoda design and I'll just drag this right in there. And you can see that it is awfully big. So I'm just gonna go ahead and resize this to somewhere around there. And again, I can click on P and that will center it. And I can zoom back in. And now in order to see this, you can just kind of hide the output. And you can see that this is on image right here. And we just wanna shrink this down until it's inside the circle. And if you hold down control, it will resize from the center in so you don't need to reposition. So I can zoom in and kind of get it right to where I want. I want it on the inside of this ring because the coin already has a ring on it for my coin. And so I want it just on the inside. So right about there. So now if we zoom in, we can see that it's just on the edge and there isn't any of this lighter gray showing. We want it to be only on the darkest gray. And we can kind of just double check different areas to make sure that that's correct. So now that I have that done, I need to select both the line and the image. And the easiest way I found to do this is just to hide the image for the time being click on the line and then you can unhide it, show it, hold down shift, click again, and now you have them both selected. And then just go into apply mask to image and that will get rid of everything else outside. So I like to try and keep this as organized as possible so I don't have a big giant mess in the cuts layers panel. So I'm going to just move this up above the tool path and I'll keep that hidden for a second. And I have the image and the line for this. And before this next step, I'm going to actually just duplicate this line again. So I'll click on that, right click, 
and go to duplicate and I'll set a new layer for this one. I'll click on 0, 2 and I'll set this to align and I'll hide that one for the time being. So if I click on both of these, as you can see, they're both selected. I can right click again and I'll flatten the image mask. So now I have this one all flattened. And now I duplicated this one because I will be doing the backside as well and I needed another tool, which I could have duplicated this tool path, but I decided just to do this one instead. So bear with me. So again, to keep this organized, I will just move this line up just a little bit above the tool. And now we're going to bring in the back side of it. So I'm going to hide the first one, the front, and I'll bring in the back side. And as you can see, it's gigantic again. So again, we'll just go ahead and we'll press P on the keyboard to center this hold down control and we can shrink it down and I didn't actually unhide the line yet so there we go now you can see it and just like we did before we'll shrink this down to where it's just inside kind of zoom in went a little too far and right about there looks good so just like before I'm just gonna move this up above the tool so we have the line and the image that we're going to need and for the time being, I'm just going to hide the image. I'll click on the ring itself, the circle. Now I can unhide that, hold down shift, click. Now I have both, right click and apply mask to image once again. And right click again and then flatten image mask. So now we have both. And if I show the output, I can hide that one, have the other one. And now I have the tool path as well for getting it all set up. So now we're basically done getting everything set up for the images. So now I'll go ahead and change the settings for both the front and the back, as you can see right here. And I can just double click on it. And these are the settings that I used in the previous video for the Terminator coin, which was a brass coin. This is going to be steel, so I will have to adjust this a little bit differently. And I'm just gonna name this front and the other one I'll just name back. So the settings I'm going to use for this, the speed, I'm going to slow this way down. Steel is a lot harder than brass. So I'm just gonna set this to 1500 millimeters per second. For the frequency, I'm going to set this to 42. The max power I will leave at 90 and the Q pulse I will leave at 200. The line interval as well, I will leave it 0 0.025. I will ha have this on 3D sliced mode. Now, if you're not using a fiber laser, you probably won't have 3D sliced. You'll probably only have up to grayscale. So you will be needing to use a fiber laser if you wanna have this option. The number of passes, I will have at 256. And that's basically it. So I really only needed to adjust the speed and the frequency just a little bit to get the settings that I wanted. Now I tried a ton of different settings from raising the frequency to lowering the Q pulse to raising the power and speed to lowering the power and speed and I'll show you that and all the different results a little bit later in this video. But this is what I found to work the best for me based on the 60 watt uh, JPT laser with a 70 millimeter lens. So with all those settings correct, I will just duplicate that on the back of it too. So I'll set this to 1500. Max power I will set at 90. The frequency I will set at 42. Q pulse I'll leave the same line interval, 3D sliced mode. Number of passes I will set to 256. And that's it, and I'll click OK. Now. I found that I didn't need to do a cleaning pass on this at all. All I needed to use was a wire brush, which is just like a rubber bristle brush that basically cleans it all for me. So there's really no point of running a cleaning pass as I've tried using a cleaning pass as well. And that kind of made everything worse and just put some little indentations, which again, I'll show you later on in this video. So that's basically it on getting this set up. Now in order to get this 
all laser engraved. I will just hide the back for now and leave just the front on output showing and show it so you can actually see it. And I will turn on the framing so I can get this framed on the coin. So for those of you that are new to Lightburn and haven't used this before, I would recommend as well that once you have everything set up that's working for you, go into your library and actually save this and create a new layer so you have all your settings already saved. I've already done this, so I am not don't need to do it again. But once you have it saved, you can just assign it to the layer so you don't have to retype in all the settings each time. So now I'll jump back over to the machine itself and we'll get this all focused and get this started. So here we are over at the machine and for me I found that 139 millimeters from the top of the surface to just the bottom of the machine is the right distance for me to get the perfect focus not from the lens but from right at the base is what I found to be optimal. So I'll go ahead and I'll click on the tool layers only and that gives us our circle that we had set up earlier and now I can easily just get this centered right to the center of the coin. And it is a good idea to have proper ventilation as you can see I have this hose and I just made this little rig that easily goes out my window so it sucks out all the fumes. So now that I have this all set up I'll go ahead and I'll just click on start and we'll let this burn. All right, so this coin has finished and we can take a look at this. It'll focus. So this is what it's looking right, right now before I actually clean it up. But I'm gonna flip it on over. We'll do the backside. And then once that's done, then we'll get this all cleaned up and go from there. And as you can see, this did take little over two hours to complete. So now that the front is engraved, all I need to do is go ahead and hide the front, turn on the back, swap out the outputs, and we're ready to reframe again and get the back started. Alright, so this side has finished. We can take a look. And there you go. So all that's left now to do is take this over to the rotary tool and I'll get this all cleaned up. All right, so that is how you engrave and clean up and polish the steel coins. Again, I am using the Monfort GI60, which is a 60 watt fiber laser and using a 70 millimeter lens. Now, I did have numerous trials, as you can see right here, that some just didn't turn out that great. As you can see, they just didn't turn out good. So I tried this a bunch of different times and this was by far the best that I got. Again, I'll show this one more time. You can see how shiny and reflective this is. 
and I think the detail overall looks really, really good. So I will be giving this coin away, and if you'd like to win this one, all you need to do is make sure you're subscribed, leave a comment, and just let me know which Star Wars character is your favorite, and I'll be picking a winner shortly. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button down below, ring the bell, get notified of all the new videos that come out, and as always, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.